breathe. Yes! Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're featuring uh, one of my favorite cars. This is sort of, well, the original muscle car, certainly from Chrysler. It's the 66 Dodge Coronet with the 426 Street Hemi. Now, earlier in 64, 65, I guess the story goes Chrysler came out with the Hemi engine, but they couldn't get uh, homologated for NASCAR because it wasn't a production vehicle. So for 66, they put this engine in, uh, in a production car. It was the Plymouth Belvedere had it over at Plymouth and Coronet had it over at Dodge. And, uh, this is sort of the classic example of the muscle car that I like. No hood scoops, no, you know, silly horn, no stripes, no, just dog dish hubcaps, solid color paint, in this case green, obviously, big 426 Hemi engine, and a Torque Flight three-speed automatic transmission. And the Torque Flight, I believe, was the first transmission that was actually faster shifting than the four-speed. You know, most drag racers use a four-speed transmission, and automatics were not particularly efficient or strong prior to the torque flight. This is one of the greatest automatics of all time. Could take all kinds of a beating. And it had a 325 rear end. There was no air conditioning. There's no power steering on this car. There's no power brakes. Uh, this is basically looks like a taxi cab. As I said before, this is the one car my wife has no idea why I like it. Well. It's all right there, 426 Hemi. I mean, if there was ever anything that could double the value of a car quickly, it's, it's that. They only built uh, 732 Hemi engines in 1966 for these Dodge cars because when you got the normal Chrysler, you got the five-year, 50,000-mile warranty. When you got the Hemi, you got 90 days. That's it, pal, three months. And don't come back after that, okay? because this was essentially a racing engine for the street. Although it was listed at 425 horsepower, a lot of people think it was closer to 500. 460 was probably a pretty good number. Um, I got, had this one about eh, 28, 29 years. I saw it for sale in an auto show. I just fell in love with it. Perfect color, black interior. I was looking for a four speed, but there's something about this, the way this one sat. And I pulled the build sheet on it, and it turns out to be exactly what I thought it was. It's a real 426 Hemi. It was built uh, on Wednesday, March 30th, 1966. It's got the premium bucket seat options with the vinyl. Ooh. So the options are bucket seats, console shift. Anyway, there's the build sheet on the car right there. 66 B-Series, VIN number. Uh, it's a real Hemi car. It's one of the 732 cars they built that year. And then this is all the other uh, features. Parallel wipers. Ooh. What else we got there? Safety door handles. Ooh. Weather stripping. But none of that counts. All you care about is the 426 Hemi. Come on, let me open the hood and I'll show you what I'm talking about. In 1966, this is probably the most impressive engine you could get, and it still is to this day. Chrysler still uses the Hemi uh, tag, even on engines that aren't technically a Hemi. This is exactly as you would have got it in 1966. Single master cylinder on the brake. I haven't upgraded anything. It's exactly stock. The only thing I've done is put a modern Optima battery. We like these Optima batteries. They work pretty good. Uh, one of these, they'll get one of the old tar top type batteries, but just for running around. Uh, that massive air cleaner, two four barrel carburetors, and of course the Hemi valve covers, certainly I think one of the prettiest engines of all time. Of course the engine block done in that Hemi orange. It has drum brakes, there's no disc brakes. This doesn't go around corners, <laughs> it doesn't do any of that stuff. It's just meant you get from point A to point B pretty quickly. And if there are no corners in the way, even better. But that's basically what's involved here. As you can see, everything was, well, as heavy duty as you could get it for 1966. 
There's no uh, pretense here for this engine to be other than, other than what it is. You know, the Hemi engine was an expensive option. It was probably one-third the price of the car. I think it was maybe seven hundred dollars out the door with if you want the Hemi option, which doesn't seem like a lot now, but in a car that only starts at two or three thousand dollars, that's a third of the price. I like the pillarless coupe. I like this body style better than the Belvedere. I thought it was a little sexier. It had the brown steering wheel, which is supposed to make you think it's wood grain. It's not. Uh, it's hysterical. You can bury the needle in this thing like that. And it's still still pretty quick. Full-size trunk. It sort of looks like an unmarked police car to me, but certainly faster than any police car that was around back in 1966. It's, you know, it's hard to uh, convey the image these had. I guess the closest thing would be the Hellcat today to what this was back in 1966. You know, back in those days, zero to 60 and anything under 10 seconds was considered pretty quick. This went zero to 60 in 6.5 sec seconds with a 322 rear, 323 rear end in it. And that was just crazy. And once you put slicks in it and put some headers on it and opened it up a little bit, Boy, then it really, really made power. Most people opted to get the 440 engine because that was just cheaper to build, more reliable, and you could get the 50,000 mile guarantee warranty with the 440 engine. With the Hemi, not so much. This was deemed a racing engine, and that's why I only had the 90 day warranty. They knew anybody who bought this only did it for one purpose. Outrun the cops, street race, go fast. That's the reason you got it. That's probably why they only sold 732 of them. But as you can see, pretty straightforward. Nice looking car inside. No electric windows. You know, I had a friend of mine come over here with his kids. They were like eight and nine years old. They went, hey, dad, look at this. They turned the crank and the window went up. Hey, dad, look at this. And they turned the crank and the window went down. Then the other kid said, let me try it. And they each sat on each side, putting the windows up and down, thinking, oh my God, that's like the greatest thing they've ever seen. Imagine turning a crank and the window goes up and down. So there you go. Not the easiest car to drive. As I said, there's no power steering or power brakes. So it needs a lot of foot pressure and a lot of Armstrong steering to get it around corners. But there's something brutally honest about it, which makes it just a lot of fun to drive. As long as you don't plan on stopping any time in the near future, the brakes are actually okay. Not, not too, too bad. Um, it had seat belts. I remember the movie Bullet. Remember where they're in the Dodge Charger? And remember they're chasing Steve McQueen. That, there was one scene that probably got more guys to wear seat belts than anything else where the guy goes with the shotgun, they takes the seat belt clicks it up, you know, oh, now they mean business, boy. But then they ran into a gas station and blew up, so the seatbelt really, really didn't do a whole lot for them. But it's thought that counts. What else has it got? Oh, it's got the outside mirror, like an $8 option. Um, that's about it. You got the console, you got bucket seats, outside mirror. Uh, that's about the only option on the car. As you can see, it's a full-size car. Uh, you know, it's not like the GTO, the, it's not a mid-size, it's a full-size car, but it had so much horsepower that uh, a few extra pounds didn't make a whole lot of difference. Um, massive trunk. The trunk is hilarious. Let me show you the trunk. Look at the trunk in this thing. There you go. That's a trunk, laddie. And you got your, uh, my 66 Cornet brochure. See this woman? She's a grandmother now has 11 grandchildren, yeah. But uh, back then she was part of the Dodge Rebellion. See all the... And of course you had all those kind of Peter Max kind of colors. I always love they put the tachometer down by the uh, transmission tunnel. We actually have to take your eye off the road to find it. But there you go, this is... I always like these old brochures. Ah, oh, there's mine in the color. I like all green rather than that's got the green and black top. And, and, and as you can see, she's holding a bomb. I'm not quite sure what, she's either a terrorist ahead of her time. I'm not quite sure what the story is there. I didn't even think they, I didn't think they put the 426 Hemi in the brochure. Let's see, because it was such a, a specialty item. No, they don't. 
They don't even mention the 426 Hemi engine because they figured, look, if you wanted to get the Hemi engine, you knew about it already. You know, nothing in the brochure was going to change your mind. But I thought that was pretty cool. And of course, your spare tire is down underneath. But that's, you can rent this out to a family of four. This is a good sized trunk in this thing. Look at this. I think it's time to take this for a ride. Now, when we take a lot of the other cars out, like the Studs Bearcat and some of the older stuff, we stick to the side streets or the two-lane roads. But this thing, this likes the open highway. That's where this thing belongs. Just step on the gas and go. You know, this car didn't come with a tachometer. And when I first got it, I thought, why won't it shift? Because I would hold it in... I would hold it in gear and then it'd rev all the way up to what felt like 7,000 RPM or so and it still wouldn't shift so I would take my foot off the gas and then choop, and then it would shift and go, oh, okay. And I, I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong or what was wrong with the transmission, why I was sticking in gear. Well then I spoke to a Hemi guy and uh, he said, just keep your foot in it, it'll shift. I go, it doesn't feel like he goes, no, he says that engine will rev to 7,200 which for a big cast iron 426 overhead valve hemi head engine that was pretty high revs i said i don't think so Are you sure he said yeah just try it i'll show you what i mean yeah but this thing loves to breathe yes see it feels like it's never going to shift but it shifts about 7,200 RPM. And as the Hemi got uh, a little longer in the tooth, they got a little milder and milder. I, don't, I think the first year, the 66, was the most powerful year for this motor. It's probably in the lightest body, and it had the most horsepower. By 67, 68, 69, emissions were coming in, and uh, it wouldn't do this anymore. Ew. Much as I enjoy my Hellcat, this thing is still a lot of fun. Every now and then I like to look in the rearview mirror, see if McQueen's uh, Mustang is back there. I believe that had a 390 in it. I'll tell you a little secret about Bullet. The gear shifts you hear McQueen do in that uh, Mustang GT, it's actually from a Ford GT, from one of Le Mans cars. They, they actually put in the sound of that car shifting gear to give it a little more visceral racing feel. But really from about 60 miles an hour on, when you put your foot down on this, like now, just don't plan on stopping anytime soon. But to me, this is a classic American muscle car. This is about the most horsepower you could get in America in 1966. I mean, it's true. Chevrolet had their 427 and Ford had their, they had their 427 sock motor. But this one, uh, this one does something special. And 100 miles an hour, this thing just hunkers down. It's hilarious. I used to go through tires like this on a yearly basis. this 323 rear end in and it's really not meant for drag racing but on the open road it really gives you a high top speed it's speed the lack of power steering is you don't really miss it I mean it's not exactly rack and pinion but it's okay it does all right why I love this thing so much. I think it's just the understated honesty of the car, you know. No, as I said, 
There's no hood scoops or racing stripes. It doesn't say GTX or any of that. Just a little two-door sedan with a big honking motor in it, you know? And it, uh, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. That's what's kind of the fun part about it. And occasionally I'll pull up to a light and guys of a certain age will look over and not give it a second glance and look at the fender and go, whoa! Oh, and then they see the Hemi, then everything changes. As you can see, nice panoramic windshield on this thing. You know, this thin A-pillar, you can actually see what's next to you. I, it's my biggest gripe with modern cars. I know they're safer, but that big A-pillar is so wide, you can't see what's there. I, I like this. Plus, you got this here. Look at this. There's your air conditioning, pal. Doesn't cost you a dime more. As you can see, the dashboard is a pretty, pretty state, straightforward. Gasoline here. Engine temperature here. These Hemi's actually run pretty cool. This thing never overheats. It's 100 degrees today and we're in fine shape. Speedometer goes to 120, that's a joke. There's your alternator charge and discharge. And there's your clock. I didn't order the clock, so obviously they want everybody to know you're too cheap to order the clock, so there you go. A AM radio right there. Blower switch and of course, heater defroster. And that's about it. Down here you got lights. You got wipers, of course your key, and your all-important cigarette lighter. But it does kick in when you... It's fun to throw the cameraman in the back. As you sort of wood simulated, it doesn't really look like wood. It just, just looks like brown plastic, but that's okay. That's all right. And you shift it right here. You can shift it manually if you want. Let's put it in low. But it does a pretty good job of shifting it itself. You can actually chirp it in second gear. There you go, hear that? These cars really do represent the last days of the old technology. Big engine, sturdy frame, body on frame boom you're out the door you know uh pretty straightforward easy to repair easy to work on even though that hemi engine was uh, a complicated engine in its day pretty straightforward now you open that hood everything is easily accessible what's up my friend how you doing Thank you! Have a good day! Let's see if you can step on the gas and get away from crazy people. <laughs> well, I hope that gives you a better understanding why I like this car so much. Um, you know, it's, it's rare. It's a great color. And uh, it's really, really fast. Those of you that like the Challengers and the Hellcats, well, if you scratch those and get the DNA, you'll find this. I mean, th those cars wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these. And these have become so highly collectible that I think, uh, like my Hellcat, I got the Hell. It's so funny, when this was ordered, it was a 426 with the automatic, because that was the hot setup. Now, to me, the hot setup is the 707 horsepower Hellcat. Even though that eight-speed automatic is great, the Chrysler has, I like the stick, and I think that's going to be the real collectible one in the years to come. But uh, 30 years from now, some kid will be driving mine going, yeah, this old guy with white hair, he's bought this thing new, you know, on my Hellcat. And just like I say that about this, although I don't know who ordered this one new. We, we found out the day it was built and, uh, in 1966 and all of that and where it was built, but I don't know who bought it, but hopefully he's still out there burning some rubber somewhere. So. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.